Hey team, welcome to another edition of the Rugby League Lounge Weekly Show. A bit later this round, I do apologise. Now, just to start things off, we're going to kind of be approaching things a little bit differently now. I originally said I didn't want to do like reviews of the games and turns out that's what I was kind of doing. Just, you know, just got carried away, didn't have the right kind of structure in place, kind of was going a bit off the top of my head and I was just ended up reviewing the games. And so I've changed it this, this week and hopefully we just talk about little talking points from each game rather than a review and kind of focus on topics because you can watch plenty of shows based on just reviewing games. And, yeah, I wanted more focus on storylines where we can take here, there, and everywhere. Um, hopefully, I can get some more guests on. Also, there will be no Modern Day Twist this week. It's been a pretty busy weekend for me, um, to be honest. So i have trying to organise a few things and almost was able to pull a few strings and get – someone on plus a modern day twist but at the end of the day it was just rushing things cramming too many things in so didn't want to panic anyone and we're just going with this so yeah this week from now on it's going to be called the um whatever round it is so it's going to be round three golden points of the week and it's going to be inspired by you guys so when i put up on my thing obviously i did takeaways but this week i said what are your takeaways for this team you just go here, there, and everywhere, whatever you want to talk about, something that you kind of, you know, noticed or something that you, yeah, fought from that game that was, might not get the attention that, um, that it deserves, then, you know, send it away. So we'll start round three. Obviously, it was a while away. I do want to get these out by Monday, but this week it just happened to be, didn't suit. So it's Wednesday, and I want to. I'm doing this recording this Wednesday. Hopefully, I'm uploading it tonight. I haven't been able to post anything tonight, so yeah, today I should say. So hopefully, I get this out today. So we're going to start with the Penrith Panthers, and for me, and see me. Let's say now this name. I'm too, not too sure how to pronounce it. So I think it's see see my see my Lisa. He talked about Brighton and his bright future. Now, my question to you guys, how bright is Brighton's, Burton's future? I wrote in my post talking about my stock report saying buy him as just a genuine superstar of the future. I honestly believe that there's something about him ever since he debuted. He just looked like he had a natural touch. He's beefed up a bit. He's going to get the opportunity at Bulldogs. That might be my biggest concern, even though the Bulldogs haven't been great. You know, even after acquisitions, I'm not too surprised. They've got more coming in next year with Burton and obviously with Addo Carr. But that could be a concern. Maybe he's made the wrong decision in terms of the future, not having that platform set for him. Maybe he would have been better out sticking at the Panthers, even though he had a little idea. He might have been forced to pay one. Might have ended up little eye having the split and he pay six. But, yeah, I think he's got a tremendous future he's just got a great feel for the game don't be surprised if he is the future australian six and obviously if he's australian six new south wales six um his probably biggest contender is going to be little eye by the time you know the likes of kerry walker whiten by the time um you know they they'll probably be up in age by the time these guys are hitting their prime you don't expect Matt, Matty Burton will be right there. He looks just unfazed. You know, we had that game last year against the Knights. He missed a field goal three times, but he came back and was probably the man of the match the week after against the Warriors. And yeah, he's got a rocket for boot. He's got playmaking skills. I think he'll get more confident in his running game when he had, feels like it is, it's his team. Yeah, I was very impressed by Burton. And yeah, they come up against the Melbourne Storm, a classy opposition thrown in there, no, no Cleary. And, you know, for out of the two halves to stand out from the Panthers, it was him rather than Luai. So very, yeah, very great performance. And honestly, if we're talking about him as the best half other than Nathan Cleary from that come decade, I know it's a long stretch and you probably think I'm overreacting to his performance, but I've always felt this way about Burner. I've always had a gut feeling about him. He's that one guy where I probably do overreact or probably overrate in other people's eyes just because there's just something. You know when someone just draws it in and Burden's got that for me. 
Let's go to Melbourne. Game dots, he said, falling apart for Smith. Now, okay, we all know what was going to happen. Yes, I thought they were going to make my premiership and my bit bias, potentially. But they suit the style of game played. Now, yes, they've won one out of the last, out of the first three games. They've come up against arguably their top opposition. Um, maybe not Parramatta Eels, but Parramatta Eels were sensational against them. They are the only undefeated team along with Panthers, who they also lost to, who probably should be premiership favourites. You've got Rabbitohs, who many people picked to win the grand final. We beat them. So at the end of the day, uh, we even doing that bad, and we've just lost in the last couple of minutes each game. We were should have won last game with Oldham. You know, we won't get to that, but I don't think we are. Yes, the direction's not there. Yes, we probably would have won those games with Cameron Smith, but you got to remember, what we're missing with Cameron Smith is not having, you know, he takes away, obviously, having a hooker. Who are we missing? Our best, ugly, our best player, probably other than Cameron Munster or Anne Ryan Pippenhausen. Harry Grant's not there. And you could argue he's the best hooker in the game. I don't personally believe that, but I believe at the end of the season, he will be that. You're missing the guy that's taking over Captain Smith as captain. Dale Finucane, leadership, which also brings out the best element from the storm that put them over top of every other team was their powerful bench. Because Finucane and Grant can be there, you are going to have Nelson come off the bench. You're going to have Brandon Smith coming off the bench, who is the best bench player in the league when he's there. That's how he's best utilised. And that's what got you over the hump last year, I believe. And so you don't have that this round, and you're still being more than competitive. You easily could have been free and free. So, yes, you can't get back that direction, but they can play a different style for you. We haven't seen them play a game with Harry Grant yet at all, at all, not even last season. Yes, he played a couple of games in 2019, but as our main guy, as the full form Harry Grant we've seen now, the guy that was sensational in origin, we haven't seen it yet. So hold your horses. We're not falling apart without Cameron Smith, okay? Dragons, game, dots, struggle against heavyweight. So he also said they'll finish ninth to 10th. Now, this is prior, probably before we got confirmation about Ben Hunt. Now, look, I tipped the Dragons to do wooden spooners, to be wooden spooners, I should say. Um, and they probably weren't. At the end of the day, I, even with Ben Hunt, if he was healthy, I'm not completely falling off that. you got to understand, the verse come up against the Cowboys, who we'll get to later. Jeez. Get to the Cows later. Uh, Manly, who have been awful. The two worst sides. The two teams that have been, um, that haven't won a game. You know, and nothing against the Dragons. They've played what's been in front of them and been brilliant, but their four-pack is, doesn't offer them too much. Um, yeah, and they've been... I think, yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, it's helped the opposition they've come against. Um, they did pretty good against the Sharks as well. They could have won that game too. But if they did have been unhealthy, could they finish not for 10th? I could still finish not for 10th. I think this is going to be a pretty interesting race for the wooden spoon. I think even though the Broncos won the weekend against the Bulldogs, Vincent's um, style, they could still be there. Um, the Tigers are going to be like a roller coaster. You don't know what to expect. So, yeah, for me, look, but in terms of that, I do get your point. I think that's the thing with the Dragons. I will never, like, win that cup as a heavyweight. Yeah, there's not, there's nothing that I think there's a game breaker that can make this even, you know? Like, when I see, like, oh, like, for example, when I see the Cowboys come up against a heavyweight, it's like, oh, you know, Jason Tamalolo might have a big game. If I see Manly come up against you, oh, Chevens, to when Tommy's back, he might turn it on. Um, you might even, I was going to go as far as staying low for the Tigers, that might be a bit of a stretch. But there's players on these other teams that can make it competitive because they've just got that X factor. I don't see that with the Dragons. I'm sorry. Yes, Matt Dufty's got that little burst of him, but consistently, um, I, I just think, yeah, I think, yes, they will struggle against the heavyweights. I think that's a fair assessment game. So you're on the money there. Manly, um, League of Inches, wooden spoon bound, no attack. Yeah, at the end of the day, even though Tommy's out, a lot of these issues can't be fixed even with Tommy in there. I underestimated the loss of Anthony Blake. Obviously, I understand he's a top 10 prop in the game, arguably even, you know, higher status in the game. 
But I thought, yeah, bring in Josh LOA. I think that was one of the more underrated signings. You got Big Paseca there too. Look, they're going to miss Fanua Blake, but hey, you've got a mobile for there. You've got big size. You've got a guy that can, you know, um, Nelson off so much light in terms of the size and be able to create second phase footy. Paseca, um, but they got no, yeah, they got no oomph at all. Like Dylan Walker, you know, don't want to be negative of anyone, but look, I'd rather give that more than half, half a guy go at fullback or something else. Nothing's happening there. You need something going out of hooker. K Cust needs to go in the hooker. Something needs to be there. There's just no energy. There's no direction like uh, League of Interest has said. There's nothing, and it's something Tommy wouldn't be able to fit fix and honestly it does make me question this has like because he's been able to pull stuff out the bag be able to get the best out of you know players that you don't expect much of but he just seems like he hasn't been able to make the adjustments to suit today's game and he's kind of maybe just relying on players that have you know kind of done it for him in the past but aren't up to scratch and yeah they're they're also missing money see final you know a lot of people give a bit of slack for releasing Carousel, but you got to, at the end of the day, they released him because they had Fino. That season where Carousel was there and they made the eight, Carousel wasn't really much of a factor. Yes, he started, but Fino off the bench was a better hooker than Carousel that year. And I think that goes um, missing big time, big time. So they missed him. I thought he was the most underrated valuable asset out of all the teams. I remember making that same in 2019. He was huge for Manly that season. So without him, no Fenua Blake, no Tommy, as we all know. Yeah, they're die, die straights, die straights, Manly. Um, let's go to the Roosters Entertainment House. So Ali incoming. So basically, he's producing net injuries a lot. And we can talk about briefly how that impacts the Roosters' premiership chances. Look, I think they really need to... They've still got a chance because they could ultimately do some pretty scary things that might not work. It might just not work. They might just need that guy steering around the ship. You also got to consider no corner, consider no corner as well. No, they're missing their, their leader, their heart, their soul still in corner. But they could do some scary things when you got you give more ball to your mate, give the ball to the most dangerous players on the paddock more often. So you get Teddy around the ball more at six. How's that going to look? I'm not too sure. Sam Walker, yes, he hasn't debuted. But this kid is actually, talk about hype, and I'm one of those guys give the guys a chance, but I, I think this kid is going to deliver. And then you've got Joseph Manu, who is the best fullback in the game that's not playing fullback. He is spectacular. So if you can get your best attacking weapons around the ball, and you've got Victor Radley coming back to take some pressure off Tedesco and Walker, and ultimately, this is why I kind of believe this could potentially work. They've got to change a few things. They're going to look, they're going to be a different team. It's going to take a while, so don't overreact straight away. But I would love to, see, I haven't seen how they've named this side actually. I should have done that, but I would have loved to see Teddy at six. I would have loved to see Justin Manu at four week, and I would have loved, obviously, Walker's there at halfback. I think it would have just been interesting, especially with Victor Radley there. So, yeah, and so Ali, we haven't touched on Suali. Where do you throw him? Do you throw him somewhere in the mix? Do you throw him in the halves? Do you, you know, maybe he is with the hype as well. I think he is pretty, going to be pretty legit. I'm not too sure where you'd best fit him in because I'd rather see a Tedesco or Manu at the back because I think Suali, long-term, best position is going to be fullback. But that means, yeah, Justin Manu goes to fullback, Suali on centre. That could be it. I think Suali might have been named in the extended bench. So we could potentially see him shake up. Hey, man, if I if we do see Tedesco at six, Walker at seven, Manu at the back, and Suali come to the right centre, hey, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Uh, the Rabbitohs. Felix under um, score Doherty 34. Premiership threats. They are. The first half showed why. The second half show why people still have doubts. At the end of the day, they finished in the prelims three years in a row because they just, for some reason, the big games, they just don't look, they just can't get it done. Don't know what it is. They've got all the talent. It's just something's not there. It's just this 
I shouldn't say soft underbelly because there's some tough players in this team, but it is something missing. And even though, you know, I think players are getting the connections that Walker Mitchell combo, arguably the best combo in the game. But there's just something there still potentially like how they leaked in points. It's just, yeah, and I'm not too sure what it is. Um, look, I love Cook, but I always have questions about him in those big games as well. And we're not looking too far ahead. Let's just focus on the second half. They led in points. They should really run away with these games. We saw against the Storm, it was the opposite where they come back. At the beginning, they gave up too big a lead. So they just need to be able to show a consistent 80 metres. They need someone there. I think what it is, just someone there. Like when someone drops a ball, they should feel scared that that leader is going to be steering them down, giving them an earful. And I think there's a bit of a fear. There's a bit of a looseness, which is great. They can play. They're the best team in the comp when they're on. But I think they sometimes get into bad habits and get a bit loose because some they don't feel like the pressure's on. And then they're, then they're you know, a couple of tries down. It's like, oh, hang on a second. We're in trouble here. Um, but if they had someone in there just constantly reminding them, someone to kind of keep them in check, I think it would be a lot different. I don't know who can provide that. I don't know if there's someone to provide that in the future or if Wayne Bennett's able to install that when we get down to footy, final footy, like, yeah, this is why we're here. You guys remember what's happened in the past, in the last prelims. Yeah, let's not let it happen. Because they had that in Sam Burgess. They had that in John Sutton. So, yeah, well, who can provide that for the Rabbitohs? That's the big question. But, yes, first half showed why many people picked them to win the premiership at the start of the year. Let's go to the Raiders. Uh, I can't remember who sent this in, so... But talked about being robbed. Now, I want to focus on that four pass. What a thing. We've been talking about, you know, if we can video referee it, you know, we can video referee the bunker, everything else. Why can't we bunker um, four passes? Would it be that crazy if we just, Peter Volandis done some crazy stuff, just scrap the four pass? Do you think, hang on, hang on a second, look, come on, mate, losing it, losing the plot. But it's not going to be like the NFL. Because you still can't go all the way downfield to go outside. What you can do is you can still probably pass the aim forward, but your guy still has to be behind you. Does that make much of a difference? Now, you wouldn't be able to chip and chase, chuck it ahead of a guy and catch it, anything like that. But you could realistically maybe do that for someone else. Yes, now, that's not rugby league. Well, yes, I get that. But would we see that that often? And would this just save a lot of drama? Like those little ones that have done me half, everyone goes up in arms. At the end of the day, what's it mattering? Um, yeah, or or should it just be he, she, he's intentionally throwing it forward? Like if you could intentionally tell he's throwing it forward, like say if it's one of those little four passes, like leave it end of the day, and that one with Cody, he didn't intentionally need to throw it forward because at the end of the day, if he threw it backwards, it still would have been a try. It's tough, but I just imagine what if we just cut the four passes? Yes, we might get some ridiculous looking ones where we chuck it in goal. That could be entertaining. That could be entertaining. At the end of the day, if the guy doesn't catch it, it's going to be uh, maybe there's big penalties. Like if you, you do have to at least catch it, if you don't catch it, it's a penalty. There is some interesting things you can go with this, and it changes the fabric of the game, I understand. But it saves a big issue. We're not going back. We're not going reverse. Is that forward? Is that going to have hands forward? Is that going backwards out of his hands? Remember that Tom Dravojevic trying last against the Eels? Gee whiz. And we're going about a game in round three, I believe it was. And guess what? Manly didn't even get close to making the playoffs. We're getting big drama about it, and it doesn't even matter in the day. Um, well, actually, technically, the Eels, if they didn't win that game, they probably would have finished fifth. And But that's another story. We're getting on. But what would happen if we just got rid of the four pass? Yes, still off sides, but no four passes. Hey, just think about it. Just think about it. I definitely have probably too much. Awesome. The Warriors. Sean is uh, this is from the Entertain House. Sean O'Sullivan can ball. Now, I, like I said, um, at the start of the round, I think Sean is Sullivan coming in is definitely going to make the Chanel House to beat a loss not feel as big as it should be. He is a solid footballer. He there's a reason that he's killed it in reserve grade. 
And even though he doesn't, he looks a bit unconventional. He's not the fastest looking player. He's definitely not got the skill of how to be. There's something about him that he's green. Yeah, just a just a half that can succeed in the NRL. Now I've look the biggest thing for me for the Warriors and their future. I was thinking like Cody Nicarima is not part of their future. Cody Nicarima is playing fantastic. Cody Nicarima actually a lot of times looks more dangerous than Sheik because I think sometimes Sheik is marked out now. You know, we know what to expect from Sheik. We know how to tie him down. We just put him under a lot of pressure. We make Sheik do work that um, is going to minimise him on attack. Obviously, on the weekend, he was outstanding. But Nicarima has had some players who was outstanding. My question is, though, I still think, is Nicarima their hooker? Can Nicarima be their hooker? Because I'm not sold on their hooker options. And we know the big influence the hooker role plays in today's game. And I believe Cody Ricker, Nicarima, has played there before, obviously, and has played off the bench there for the Kiwis. I would love to see him go, and I like a combination of Chevelle, Chanel, and Sean, o- Sean O'Sullivan. Sean O'Sullivan doesn't need a th- Obviously, he's not the guy that's going to be breaking opposition open. Um, he can focus on the kicking, the playmaking things, and Chanel can focus on attacking footy. And you've got Cody Nicarima, who is going to be taking advantage of, you know, the big boys around the ruck, as we mentioned time and time again. And I think he's the only viable option there at the moment that can do that. Yes, you know, Wade Egan's there, but, yeah, not sold on him. I like what Cade Lorden brought last year. Obviously, I think he's with Manly now. But, yeah, I think Nicarima can be a serious... I'm not saying he's not... He's Like I said, he's been fantastic in the house. But I believe Sean is Sullivan can fit in there. I feel like the combination of him and Chanel would be great. And I think Nicarima, the way today's games played, why not? I'd like to see it go, and it's probably a way that they can keep all three um, going forward. Plus, who you've got coming over next year, Reese Walsh, that fullback. It is, don't know how old um, Nick Green is. I still believe he's probably still reaching his peak. He's still got years with him, but I'd like to see I'd like to see Nick Green as a hooker. I really would. Um, now, yeah, no one commented on this one. Uh, it was the Broncos, and I didn't watch much of this game. I was pretty shattered, to be fair. Um, and I believe, yes, this was the middle game of the night. Um, but I'll just talk about Coates and what his ceiling can be. Look, when he when he strides out, you know, he reminds you of some some freakish talents. The Inglises, the Falaus, uh, especially Falau. Um, he's a high flyer, um, and you can just tell as the years are going on, he's probably the third year I've been watching him play now. He just looks better. He, I used to think, oh, no, nah, he's just a guy that's he's just going to finish a few tries. But, yeah, he's really filling out in his body. Um, but he's one of those guys where I don't know if he could potentially sh- – I don't think he'll be a fullback. He can potentially shift in the centre, but he could really be one of the best wingers in a main state in the Kangaroos squad for years to come. Will he be in there this year? There's a lot of con, um, contention and being a World Cup, yeah, I think they are all persist with guys that have done it for in the rep arena, the likes of Tupo and Adakar, Gagai as well. You might even see Valentine Holmes mixed in there too, but he's yeah, he's fantastic. He's something about him, he just strides out great. He's, yeah, he's more confident to, you know, back himself. So what he can be, can he be the next flower? Let's not, let's not overreact, but let's not, you know, put it put it into, um, like, bury it. Like, potential chance. He is, you know, his stride, you know, and I know it's just a stride, but he is, yeah, it just gets you excited. It does give you flashbacks. So, yeah, he's a scary sight, and it was good to see him at full flight on um, Saturday night. Bulldogs, League of Inches, long season ahead. Yeah, like I said, I think it's all about next year. Um, hopefully, we talk about Burden. I hope Burden can come in and be the best of visibility. So, yeah, for me, there's not what is to gain. Um, you know, I think it's going to be interesting, though, know, and I'm going to give this more of a shout out next week. Luke Thompson comes in after his eye gouging suspension. He could bring a sense of energy that they've been missing. He, I'm not saying he's going to turn this season around, 
but he's going to give them a bit more promise, I believe. And it could be interesting to see what impact he provides. If he can be that leader, if he can be the guy that's, you know, just the guy that is, you know, you just plain and simple, is just their best forward, just brings everything. He just has this no-nonsense attitude. Yeah, he could be special for them, potentially. So watch out. That's my tip. Let's go to the Sharks and the Eels. We didn't see many comments here for the Sharks. I want to just touch on the Sharks more than just the game. What I mean by this is when poor Mitchell Moses was knocked out, he was stumbling around and he was refusing to say he wasn't concussed. Who was concussed? The Sharks boys are having a giggle, but they're helping, but at the end of the day, they're helping him up. More than you know, more than just a game. They were there for, you know, at the end of the day, we're in this together. They were making sure he was safe, that he wasn't going to fall over, and that he was okay. And it was great from the Sharks. It just showed, you know, you know, we can take life seriously, and we've got to get deep here, very deep here. But we can take life seriously, and it showed me that yes, even though we see some ugly moments in the field, we've got to celebrate the good. Good moments. And, yeah, I think the Sharks really showed some great maturity there with what they did with Moses. And having a little giggle, Josh Durgan giggling alongside um, Mitchell Moses in his ear was was good to watch. So, Sharks, um, yeah, there wasn't much to take away for the Sharks for me. I didn't watch much this game either. It was a bit of a slow weekend for me, guys, as I said. But, um, yeah, we didn't learn. They're going to have these games where they struggle. But for me, I learned that. The reminder, more than just a game. Um, and, yeah, no, it was great to see. And the Eels, resilient. But we'll just carry over the finals footy. The Eels and the Bunnies are the two teams where I hate to ride off the regular season for them. But for me, it is about finals footy. We talk about the Bunnies before, three prelims in a row, knocked out. Eels just don't look like they've got what it takes in the finals games. Obviously, they've bounced. They, um, you know, they bounced out in straight sets 2017. They had a horrible year in 2018, 2019. They um, also bounced out in straight sets, I believe. Oh, they, they bit the Bronx and then they lost against the Storm in convincing fashion and then bounced out in straight sets last year. Um, and last year, I thought there was great signs in the regular season. They showed a lot of, um, you know, there's a game against the Roosters they lost, but they showed a lot that... I hadn't seen in the years prior, especially, um, yeah, I think they're one of the best defensive teams, especially early on, but they dipped at the end of the season and then finals for the straight sticks, like we mentioned. So we'll just carry over. That's the main thing because at the end of the day, they haven't made any big acquisitions. They've actually lost a Michael Jennings figure who um, would have get, helped them with their defense and experience. So it's just seeing, like, what's it going to make, what's going to tick for them to, you know, realise? Is it just improvement within every player? So it's players realising, you know, no, we just got better. We know what it knows how to take. Is it just something within? Or are they missing, missing something? Or is it the likes of, no, no, it's just one player, but Barley, he's been great for them. Is it just that sense of energy? And he's a guy that can kind of be that energy booster for them. Uh, maybe he's what's, you know, given them the motivation, the confidence to do so, just realising this is our extra point of attack. Yeah, we can play this great style of footy with him there. It's not just him, and we've got our big boppers as well, but it's just this extra element it provides. So will it carry over the finals footy, this resilience? Because I was really impressed when they lost Moses. They were able to continue, and yeah, and Gaffo just stands up. King Gaffo for a reason. The Knights, um, yeah, don't don't have too much takeaway from this game. Um, there's a few concerns, few few good things too. They got the blood, some young talent, some young talent made some mistakes. But uh, at the end of the day, hey, you learn from more from your mistakes than not. But I want to touch on Pierce. Should be held in a higher regard. At the end of the day, Pierce is one of the most scrutinised players that I've ever witnessed. Actually, I think he is the most scrutinised player. It's because a lot of the origin non-success that he's had, he debuted young. The, you know, it's you know he's played 300 games and it does feel like he's been there a long time, but his career in rep level started very young. It started before I even started watching. I believe he debuted in 2008. I started watching 2009. Crazy to think he hasn't played for Australia, and I think he has been robbed of a few 
backup calls. I feel like he was the second best half behind, third best half behind Thurston and Cronk a lot of those years, you know, especially before Maloney really had the straps. Um, yeah, he was the best half there when Maloney was there in 2013. What you can, yeah, but yeah, he's had a great career. It's just those origin misfortunes. He came to Knights his first year, 2018. They would have probably played finals footy. He probably Ponga got very close to the Dell M medal one point within check. People forget Pierce finished third that year and missed almost half the season. He was tremendous. He is a talented footballer. Um, I mean, when Cronk was on his last years with the Roosters, I thought he was actually the best. Talent, most talented at half back in the game. Now, at the end of the day, who were picking? Who was a picking if I wanted to win a footy game? It was Cronk. But in terms of talent, Pierce for me was the best. But at the end of the day, he is sometimes missing that kind of finesse and touch to get your team over the line. But his career is going to be overshadowed because of negative, negative, um, what's the word, views at origin, some club misfortunes as well, some off fortunes, off the field, it's always going to hurt him. So, but yeah, when Pierce is on, he's on. He is a great player and there's there's stretches there when you think, man, how good, like, should we really be considering? So, for him not to have played Australia, I understand there's been some great talent ahead of him, but not at least once. Yeah, that is, yeah, interesting. So, congrats on 300 games and congrats on your try on the weekend to much deserved. Wish they could have got the win. Tigers, another team we didn't get any replies on, but do he, is do he the future six? You know, he, he looked in control. He actually might, you know, if you saw him in years past and you saw him within different positions, you wouldn't have thought that he actually played a lot of six growing up, but he had. So I was actually quite optimistic when I heard this and the way he spoke about wanting to play six, it's like, you know what, you don't believe everything you say, but you can generally, when someone's said, yeah, I've played six my whole life, it's not like um, he hadn't played six before, yeah, no, nah, I feel awesome now, nah, I feel like this is going to be me, but he's proven the pudding, he's been there before, he knows how it feels, he showed some great touches, um, and I think someone put out a good stat where, I think it was the amount of kicking kicks that him and Brooks made was very shared. So they shared a responsibility. So I think it was that a lot of it is a lot of it is on Brooks. Brooks not overplaying his hand. Brooks pressuring, um, not having that pressure, not feeling like he has that pressure. And Doohy can do that. Especially Doohy seems like a player who just is a guy that just wants to play footy, um, doesn't overthink. And, yeah, I think he's going to do some off-the-cuff stuff. He reminds me a little bit of potential of Jack Wyden, you know, that bigger body six, um, and people had a few doubts of him. Could he be the next Jack Wyden? Hey, if you got a Dally and 5A, a Dally and play the year out of it, you won't complain. Let's go to Titans and Peachy is the X Factor. Finally, is Peachy going to be the X Factor? I've always loved the idea of Peachy's 13, but it's never worked. He just doesn't look like he's wanted to do it. It looked like something's been holding him back physically. He just looked always like he was a bit slow. It looked like he was, his head wasn't in it, but he's starting this season out pretty good. And I thought Cowboys is a good example of this. He took on the line. He felt like when he got the ball, he could do something. And for the end of the day, even though this time inside has got some great signings, I think Peachy's got to be a huge factor on how far they can get. Um yeah, because it, when he's able to take pressure off the others, he's also one of the more experienced players. It's going to give them confidence, give them more ball to work with, um, take less pressure on the young fellas to do the hard yards as well because Peachy's able to get some go forward going and responsibility with the playmaking well. Peachy's is an all-round talent. He has got, yeah, like we said, he can... He can bust the game open. He can create for others. Um, so when he's able to do that, it just makes everyone's, it makes Taylor's job, Fogarty's job a bit easier. It makes his Tino's job easier. It makes Fafita's job easier, um, better. So, yeah, it's just for me, it's just does he have that spark in his legs? And he has shown so far he, he can. So, yeah, I hope he persists with, I hope it persists with Peachy there. Um, coming coming in as kind of like a Lucy um, because I think that's the best you can get there. Now, for me, for the Titans to 
to hit their peak this season. It's not all about this year for the Titans, but realistically, they can make the eight. I've got them making the eight, and Peachy's going to be a big reason why they are able to. And the last point, the cows. Oh, no, my trap team, as you all know, put them to finish eighth, and I had doubts about them. It was like, come on, they've got the talent, they've got it. Payton's coming. He's said all the right things. He's talking about what he's going to do with Tamalolo. He's got drink water, fullback, great. Game dots, patience, inconsistent. And obviously, he's saying this because they've lost Fenerar and have looked crap. Looked awful. But patience, inconsistency, look, at the end of the day, will be overreacting, Payton. Yes. Maybe. No. Yes. I'm unsure. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is on the players. There's just nothing there. There's nothing there. Payton's come in. And yes, it's not like expecting, like you think, yeah, oh, you're expecting to turn them around straight to the top eight team. But there's a, there was a lot in place. A lot of the times, because um, people were saying, ah, oh, they're going to be the Bulldogs. Let's talk about the Bulldogs. Trent Bout's going to come in. They'll be awesome. New coach. Look what we did with Nathan Cleaver, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, Bulldogs didn't have the talent. Cowboys have had the talent. Michael Morgan, now, we're not going to touch this potential retirement, but we'll touch on, like, the likes of Holmes. Great talent. Tamalolo. They've got origin players all around. McLean, it's, he hasn't played great, but he's an origin player. Same with Hess. Maguire's been um, there as well. Drinkwater is a talent. They've got more talent around them. They've been in the grand final three years prior. Um you just believe there is something there. There's something to work with, especially with Payton coming in. And a lot of it did come down to, you got Kyle Felt as well. A lot of it, for me, come down to they just weren't being used right. And Paul Green, it was just a marriage that had gone on too long. They just needed the, there's this potential that just someone knew there, no matter who it was, they just needed someone there, fresh mind, fresh way of thinking, and it would, it would actually you know, come pretty quick, but it hasn't been proven wrong. So, yeah, hey, might turn around. Obviously, Tamalo and played that first game, but the say Payton's inconsistent. Look, he created, did awesome culture at the Warriors, and I think he's coming to the Cowboys, and I think we've, I think what we've underestimated is how much of the Mr. Cowboys were before then. Um, it wasn't just on Paul Green. It's a lot of things, and... Um, yeah, so I think it's probably more he's had more to do than what we've perceived. But that's personally what I thought too. Or maybe the talents is not that great. Like I've talked about McLean, yes, Maguire. Those players probably just aren't the players we think they are. Plain and simple. Um, yeah, so we'll leave it there, guys. I'm looking forward to another week of footy and I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is the first episode of the Golden Points. Um, obviously we've been doing takeaways, but yeah, um, we're going to run with this kind of method of thing. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. No modern day twist this week, but hopefully next week we have someone on and someone to do my modern day twist with. So hope you guys enjoy the footy and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.